The federal government says it will make a decisive action to end the spate of attack in the country. The meeting is expected to continue on Tuesday after the president met with critical stakeholders in the federal government. And Governor of Kaduna State has raised an alarm that the bandits operating in Kaduna State are inching closer from rural communities to the cities where they attack and kill innocent citizens with utmost boldness. Hello everyone and welcome to Politics Today on Channel's Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Balloye. Let's begin with uh, the situation in Kaduna State where Governor Nasser al says that uh, he's, uh, he's now frustrating and his voice is concerned over the spate of kidnapping and banditry in the state and other parts of the country. Governor al raised the alarm that the bandits are operating in Kaduna State are itching closer from rural communities to the cities where they attack and kill innocent citizens with boldness. Speaking at a presentation of the fourth quarter security report by the State Ministry of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Governor Arafai describes the present mood of citizens in Kaduna State and the country in general as one of the despondency and increasingly loss of confidence in the security agencies as a result of the attacks. Where there was a breakdown of some of the incidents in Kaduna State, how many people have been killed. There you have it, uh, a snapshot of uh, the situation in Kaduna State from January to March this year. It's alarming that 323 people are said to have been killed by bandits. Out of that figure, 292 of them are males and 20 females. 949 kidnapping incidents have been recorded in Kaduna State. And in all of this situation, there is a senatorial district that is most heat. And that is Kaduna Central Senatorial District. Out of the 323 deaths that were recorded in these three months, 236 people were killed in that senatorial district alone. Well, that's what we're going to be discussing, the security situation in the country, banditry and kidnapping and the insecurity across the country. One might be hopeful about the end to the situation, and this is perhaps uh, a situation uh, and a feeling coming out of uh, the meeting held today at the presidential villa, particularly the statement coming from the Office of the National Security Advisor that a decisive action will be taken to end the assault. Mm -hmm. President Buhari today presided over the National Security Council meeting, and he says he has no doubt that the Nigerian security agencies and the country will overcome all the current security problems and defeat forces of evil marauding about in different parts of the country. He says government is determined to decisively end the assault on the nation and will do all that it takes to do so. The NSA in a statement released after the meeting says, quote, while the criminals continue to test the will of the Nigerian government, the president and the council which adjourned today's critical meeting until Tuesday morning to receive further briefings from the security chiefs are set and determined to decisively end the assault on the nation and will do all that it takes. He continued to say, Mr. President, he's very prepared to make profound measures in the wider inter interest of the people and the Nigerian nation. He said that there shall be no relenting until peace and security is significantly restored in our communities. End of quote. That's coming from General Babangana Mungunu, the National Security Advisor. Let's talk about some of these issues running on the security situation. I've uh, joining me tonight, Governor Abdullah Sule, the Executive Governor of Nasarawa State. He joins us from Lafia in Nasarawa State. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight on the program. Let's begin the conversation by getting your view on the statement coming from the office of the NSA that a decisive action will be taken to end the assault. There appears to be palpable fear across the land, and many are worried about the continued attacks, rightfully so. Uh, but for those who question the capacity and ability of the APC and Buhari-led federal government to deal with the situation, are they justified in their thought and opinion? Uh, thank you for hosting me and sharing. I really appreciate it. Let me first and foremost, you know, join 
uh, our good Nigerians in uh, sympathizing with the various victims and their families and their parents of what we are going through in the country. Indeed, the country is going through a trying moment when it comes about security because we are now having challenges of security in several states. It is no longer restricted to the Northeast, Northwest, North Central, or even the Southeast or Southwest. We are now beginning to have challenges across the country. And so we have to sympathize first with Mr. President about what is going through our security agencies, you know, and then the various victims that continue to have this. Now, coming back to your question, you know, concerning what you said about the NSC, uh, it's, it's not just today. The NSC and Mr. President and the security agencies and the governors have been having several meetings. So the outcome of the statement today is in line with most of the recommendations and the suggestions that we are all put forward during those meetings. And so when he tells you there is going to be a decisive action that is going to be taken, it is all uh, cumulative of the various actions that have been taken from the various meetings and the decisions that have been made from those meetings. And I have no doubt in my mind that decisive actions are being taken. So I'll, I'm part of the question is for those who had uh, doubt the capacity and ability of the federal government under President Buhari in handling the situation, are they justified by their thought and opinion uh, with the current state of things? Well, you know, in a democracy, you have people who, are, uh, who have the right to, to think the way they are. But to be fair to President Muhammad Buhari, you have to look at the security situation when he came in in 2015 and try to compare the work with what is happening today. You remember in 2015, you know, most of these security uh, challenges were restricted to the northern part of the country and predominantly in the northeastern part of the country, where, in fact, most of the local government areas, you know, in, in states like Maiduguri were all taken and maybe only about four or five local government areas were in the hands of the government when he came in. You know, so now, what action has been taken? Have we been successful in that process? What is the situation about declaration of uh, the, the emergency in three states at the time, if you remember? The states of Yobe, state of Adamawa, and then Borno, we are all under state of emergency. You know, all that is now gone. Now, unfortunately, most of these bandits have escaped to other places, and we, we are also having different kinds of challenges because we had the answers and we had after the answers what is now happening we have the IPOB, we have what is happening so you have to look at the battalion of challenges that we are facing and the actions that are being taken every day banditry has become so common kidnapping has become so common you know and then we are taking these actions one after another so i think for people who are saying that uh, the administration of muhammad buhari doesn't have the capacity i think that's just in their imagination and then just their opinions but in reality actions are being taken daily you know and uh, these security agencies are doing everything possible and i'm telling you you know from the uh, 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 part of somebody who understands maybe what is happening i sleep with insecurity challenges i will come with it we go through this every day that we are going through and we are handling them so to say there is no capacity i think that's a very unfair state but how then do you explain um, if those who think the government doesn't have the capacity to handle the situation, in fact, it calls in uh, some members of the National Assembly, those who are in the opposition who are calling, that look, if the, the, the present uh, administration cannot do it, they should step aside. Uh, perhaps looking at uh, the situation of things in the past and how things have degenerated and the scale of debts and uh, the spate of attacks that we have seen, does that explain the effort and the activities of government and the result that we are seeing? Is that a commensurate? Is that is it commensurate? Is it justified? Is it measuring up in the eye of an average Nigerian? Well, what an average Nigerian needs to understand and see, and what we are seeing on a daily basis, are the challenges we are facing every day at the various states and the way they are being handled. Most of these kidnap kidnappings that you have seen, you know, the security agencies mount a lot of pressure. In most cases, they get them released. In some cases, it takes a little bit longer to get them released. You know, I think there are two different approaches that people are talking about. A lot of people keep saying that 
we need outside support. We need outside support. So having outside support doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the capacity. During the, uh, uh, most of these uh, wars that we have fought in the, in the world, you will see a lot of countries actually asking for foreign support to come in and assist them at, at, at different ends. You know, now, if you look at the capacity, how many people we have at the various agencies, take the police, for instance. You know, one of the states that used to have over 40,000 policemen, today they have roughly just 25 to 30% of that. We have less number, you know. So if that is the kind of capacity you are talking about, well, that's what the agency, Mr. President, had given them the go ahead to make sure they engage more people, they engage more personnel, you know, to go ahead. If it is the capacity about the equipment, some of this equipment, you don't just go and order them over the shelf. You know, you have to place orders before they come in. And those orders have been placed, and some of these equipment are coming. So if, so if, when you say capacity, capacity in what aspect of it? Even if you, you, you bring somebody else to come from outside, they have to understand your environment. We are, we are having our personnel that actually understand the environment and they are doing the best they can. Uh, no, no. Uh, apol apologies to, to cut in. Capacity might be the questioning of the capacity of the government uh, is perhaps coming on the, the basis of the promises made at the campaigns and when the government was uh, seeking power uh, and what they said they would do and what we are seeing right now. And that's why I asked if yeah. those who are saying, does the government, is the government living up to the uh, promises that he made and when he was seeking office? Yes, when the government was coming in, the only major problem we had about insecurity in the country was Boko Haram. Boko Haram has technically been defeated. That's what I told you, if you look at what is happening today, you know, in, in Borno State. You know, in Borno State, most of those local government uh, areas that have been taken over by Boko Haram, they have now been taken over by, by the government. You know, when the government was coming in, the only major insecurity there was, was about that. There was no question of the IPOC. There was no question of the answers. There was no question of kidnappings on the highways on a daily basis. There was no... So all those things were not there. These are new things that are coming. As, as but, but, come I mean, so, so sorry again, the, the, the question will be, how did the government allow all of these things to degenerate to this point? Government did not allow anything to degenerate. For instance, take the issue of the banditry we have today in Nasarawa State. Most of those bandits that were dislodged from places like uh, Aborno, Anyobe, you know, a lot of them actually found their ways through the security to come to places like Nasarawa today to go and to go and, 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 and gather themselves at a place called Utu. You know, the government again, all the security agencies had a joint operation of the Air Force, the police, BSS, the Navy, and the rest of that, and they attacked them. They killed many of them, many of them ran away, and we took hostage of so many of their members of their families. You know, so the problems are coming one after another. Government will not necessarily on its own just say insecurity coming. You know, okay. so these insecurity are issues that are coming. Is it the government that now has answers to start their protests? All right. This answer start with the Buhari, the answer start with him. Is something he, he inherited. I think those so, are the issues people look, look at. We, we, we are due for break now, but quickly, there have been a series of meetings that you have recently been part of. And one will imagine that mostly uh, these meetings are on how to resolve the insecurity situation in the country. For you, what has come out of these meetings as possible concrete solution to these problems? Well, you know, all these meetings, that's why in the, from the beginning I answered that some of the issues, some of the statements made by the NSA today are actually cumulated, you know, based on different kinds of those meetings that we have had. A lot of these meetings that we have had, we made our own commendations, we made our own suggestions. We were also asked to go back, you know, to our various states, you know, and see what we can do. And then it requires planning. Security issues is about planning. You know, so they have been planning and they are putting things forward and we are coming in, we are taking actions at one at a time. And, and that's what, what you will see. It's not that when you have a meeting today, that is going to be operation tomorrow. You know, it requires some planning, and the planning is what is happening. And that's why he made those, that decisive statement that people, uh, Nigerians are going to see decisive action 
Take care. Okay. So we will, we will go on a break, but when we come back, we would like you to tell us some of those decisive action that we should be expecting in the coming days because the tension is palpable. Nigerians need uh, some respite. They want to hear what will make them sleep well tonight. We'll be back with a conversation with Governor Abdullah Sule of Nasarase. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. The spate of kidnappings, banditry, and criminality in our state are increasing at a very alarming rate. The bandits are getting bolder by the day inching closer and moving from rural communities even to urban communities. The city of Zaria was attacked last week and two housewives abducted in the peripheries of Zaria city. Our schools are being attacked and the students being executed by these bandits. In Greenfield University, we've lost five students that were killed in cold blood by these evil people. Nobody can say that he or she is safe now. Nobody can say so, even as a governor. You cannot say governors have been attacked even on the roads. So the security of the system of the nation has collapsed. Has collapsed. The present government of APC has not shown enough commitment to protect life and property of Nigerians. May I say it is not enough. If people did not vote for them, that's how it would have been. Oh, if we had known. Now you have seen it. I don't think we'll make another mistake. Making another mistake means we're already in last support now. So we're praying to God that please let us not die. Let this country not uh, die. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Governor Abdullah Sule, the executive governor of Nasser said, is our guest tonight on the program. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time. Let me allow you to quickly react to what your colleague governor, governor of River State, said, that the nation is on life support. Do you agree with that sort of description of our situation? Absolutely not. If, the, if it is on life support, even he as a governor will not be sitting there in Portugal. He will be out of Portugal by now. Let me tell you, there are times when the situation is serious. It's not about politics. Definitely, people are going to work. Yes, we are having security challenges in the country. It's not like we never had this kind of situation before. For some of us that spend most of our life working all over the country, I used to fly you know, from Lagos to Kano, and the whole of Kano everywhere was actually stuck in 2014, 2015, you know, and police, uh, soldiers everywhere, every stop point at every corner, because Boko Haram were inside every city and they were bombing. The country was not in life support then, and it is definitely not in life support today. Are we, not ha are we having security challenges? Yes. Are they many? Yes. Are they multiple? Yes. We're having them everywhere. Is the government doing something? Yes. The government is working on them every corner of the day. You know, so to say that the, 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 the country is on life support, I think that's more political than anything else. Because if it is on life support, we would not be having this, this program that we are having today. That's the meaning of life support. The life support is you can't do anything for yourself. You are not going to be, even the, the bandits will, will run into town, it is not going to be hiding. They are not going to be hiding and having this gorilla attack. They are not going to be kidnapping and running back to the bush. They will do it at will and stay inside the town. That is life support. So I think the meaning of life support may be different based on our own terminologies of it. But definitely Nigeria is not a life support. Is Nigeria having security challenges? Yes. Are people uh, dying? Yes. You know, and, and those are the kind of things. Those are the realities. Okay. Uh, would you, because you spoke about uh, those who are debating the need for foreign help for our situation, 
Would you advocate for the employment of mercenaries, either in the northeast or in the northwest? You see, when, when you say hiring them, it's a quite different thing. From the beginning, if you remember, uh, she, when the day I visited my Dubai and returned, I was one of those that said, definitely we need foreign support. But you see, I've never been in the military, neither the police or any of the security agencies. I don't know the parameters about hiring all these people that we are talking about. You know, all I want as a governor, I want peace. Whatever will bring that peace, I will grab it and say, please bring it, let it be. If it is going to be mercenaries that are going to come, please bring them. You know, I'm not going to play politics about that. You know, did we have mercenaries before, around 2015 or so? Yes, I think we did. It was the problem solved? Definitely not. You know, so I think if there is anybody who understands this, will be Muhammad Buhari, who is a major general, you know, who has been in the military, who understands it. I don't know. So I don't play politics with that aspect. So that's why I'm more interested in the fact that, but if you say, do we need foreign support? Honestly speaking, I think we do. Because personnel, we don't have enough yet. We are, it's just in the, in the process of engaging and recruiting them. Uh, equipment, I don't believe we have enough yet. And that's what the governors have been saying every minute of the day. You know, so I think we need to do that in order to be able to take these people up. But this kind of wars we are going through, I think that Afghanistan has gone through it for over 30 years, 40 years. So it's not something, because these are not people who are, it's not a, a conventional war. You know, this is something that people are high. Sick, Sorry, high Governor, if, yeah, so if you're talking about foreign help, what sort of foreign help do you think we could use now? And in particular, which countries would you suggest that, I mean, you've had foreign trainees, you understand this terrain. So what kind of foreign help would help? We need foreign technology. Foreign technology, we need to have some kind of uh, uh, equipment, you know, that will be able to monitor these bandits since they run away and, and stay in the, in the bushes. You know, so we need to have that so we'll be able to attack. You know, how many countries have this? I think so many countries are having this. Definitely the U.S. is a country I understand more than any other, you know, and therefore the U.S. has it. So if U.S. should support us, yes, we have always been part and parcel of Britain. This is the time for the British to support us, you know, with equipment, with technology, with personnel, with training that we require. We require training, yes, we require a lot of training. You know, personnel will have to come and train those people. Definitely we need lots of equipment. That is the kind of foreign... Okay, so um, I have uh, uh, a, a few questions uh, more within the little time that we have. Uh, but let me ask, do you agree that the insecurity crisis in the country is instigated by politicians? You know, there are lots and lots of uh, uh, theories about this. As I said, for me, like in Mesa State, I don't even want to pay attention to that. I want to just get rid of it. So a lot of people mention all kinds of things. You know, they say it's being, I don't, I don't have any proof. You know, I don't have anything to say that this is the particular politician that is doing it. But it is, it is being said, even at the highest level, that most likely some of these things are being instigated by politicians. Is there something that was said when Jonathan was in power? They say Boko Haram was being instigated by, by, by this. They say IPOP is being instigated by politicians. But who is IPOP attacking? The same Igbo that they are, they are doing. So if they want to save the Igbo, why are they attacking fellow Igbo themselves? So you see, some of these uh, things are theories that I'm telling you. I'm not an expert in it, and I don't want to even delve into all those theories. Uh, perhaps one, uh, because I'd like to ask a question on politics, but this is going to be perhaps my last question on uh, uh, the security situation. Someone like Senator Aline Dume has asked that state governors should also play their part in securing their domains. Considering the enormity and spate of the, uh, the crisis, has uh, have the state governors gotten to their wit's end? Governor Samuel Oton, for example, says his hands are tied when it comes to taking decisive action on issues like this. Is this applicable to you too? No, no, no. My hands are not tied at all. I mean, we are taking action every minute of the day. Just three days ago, you know, Fulanis came in, they came, they killed some, some 90 people here in Nasarawa State at Doma. The state government came in to, over the matter because of the other bigger problems around the country. Nobody even got to hear about it. You know, so every day of our life, we are having one kind of problem or the other. So I think 
maybe my big brother in Dume is not uh, uh, familiar with what is happening in other states. If not, state governors are definitely keeping the security agencies on their feet, supporting them with their treatment, supporting them with so many tools they require, supporting them with allowances. So state government are the ones keeping these security issues going on. So to say, let them come and do their part, I think that's a, a kind of uh, <laughs> statement. I don't know how to call it. All right, to wrap up now, and let's do this in, uh, in, uh, on, uh, on an issue in politics. Um, you have canvassed for the North Central Region, and particularly Nasserah State, your own state, to produce the next cha national chairman of the APC. Who specifically are you rooting for? Well, you see, but, uh, uh, first and foremost, I rooted for Nasserah State because the pioneer... If you look at the legacy parties that came together to form the APC, those were the CPC, the ACN, and the ANP. So far from the ANPP side, we had two chairmen, you know, Oyogun and the, the current chairman that we have. From the ACN side, we have Akande and Oshimole side. So all the campaign I was making was that if anybody will look at CPC, so the Nasana State is the state to look at. Why? Because it was the only CPC state in the entire federation. And that was his Nasana State that was used, you know, definitely for that. And so when I went out there, I was making the campaign, if you remember, I mentioned, of course, number one person that I will support, you know, will be Tangwan Makura, my predecessor. And that's the, that's the way that I put the argument so far, continuously. You know, but I'm not trying to say, no, it must be Tanko and Mokura. It's not that. That's, that's not the way that uh, we do our campaign. That's why the number one requirement is that Nasrallah State deserves it. Because it is Nasrallah State that was used, you know, for that matter. And I think that's the direction that I, All right. I have taken this argument. Governor, thank you so much tonight for your thoughts, and I appreciate it so much. Governor Abdullah Sule, Executive Governor of Nasrallah State, thank you so much for your time tonight on the program. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shomakimale. Bye-bye.